given a circle, it's got a tangent here, and we've got some points at which the tangent goes through. We're also given the equation of the circle. We're asked to find the coordinates of C and the exact radius. Well, we've got everything we need from this, uh, this equation. We just need to write it in the correct form. X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared is equal to R squared, where the center is then AB and the radius is R. So let's give that a go. Now I can rewrite this as x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 9y plus 19 equals 0, and then complete the square. So completing the square here, we're going to get x minus 3 all squared. We just have that 6, or should I say minus 6, and then I'm going to need to minus 9. So that bit I've underlined is exactly the same. I'm assuming that you're comfortable completing the square, so I'm not going to go into any more detail. Here, a little bit more awkward, it's going to be y plus 9 over 2. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. It tends to be a bit easier to deal with, especially without a calculator. I know you've got a calculator here, but it's just it just it's just a little bit easier to understand and read often. Because then I'm going to minus 9 over 2 all squared, which is just 81 over 4. And then that uh, I'm going to add 19, and that's going to equal 0. Okay, we're nearly there actually. x minus 3 squared plus y plus 9 over 2 squared. To be fair, it's probably easiest. I mean, we could do it without the calculator by putting it over a common denominator. But it's going to be minus 9 minus 81 over 4. And then plus 19, 40, minus 41 over 4. But when I put it on the other side, that's going to equal 41 over 4. Or root 41 over 2 all squared. Okay, that is actually the same as 41 over 4. I've put it in that form because now I can write down the coordinates of C. It's going to be 3 minus 9 over 2. And the exact radius is going to be root 41 over 2. On to part B of this question, where we have a tangent at D. So it just touches the circle, glances off of it. And this meets the x-axis when x is 55 over 4 and meets the y-axis when y is minus 11. And we're asked to find the area O, B, D. So we know this length, actually. It's just going to be 11. Therefore, the perpendicular, kind of the perpendicular height, if you imagine turning it round, will be this thing here. So if I can find the x coordinate of D, then I'm sorted. Well, let's just try and find the coordinates of D. Focus on that. I'm going to show you two ways we can do this. First way is going to be to get the equation of the tangent and then solve it simultaneously with the equation of the circle. That will give me d. And I know there's going to be a repeated roots to this um, to this as well because it just crosses in one place. Um, so first of all, I need the equation of the tangent. And the tangent goes through 0, minus 11, and 55 over 4, 0. That 55 over 4 seems to make things complicated, but you can bet that it's going to simplify things in the long run. And we're not, we're going to get like a, a reasonable answer for the area, not like lots of, no, not like the square root of, 28 or something you know you could do but i'm just expecting that to happen so let's find the equation of the tangent well the gradient is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 um, and i'll put in zero here so zero minus minus 11 over 55 over 4 minus zero which is actually 11 divided by 55 over 4 or 11 times 4 over 55, 
44 over 55 or 4 over 5. Of course, you can do that with a calculator, but it's quite nice to be able to do it without. And therefore, the equation is going to be y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So I'm going to I'm going to use this point here as a little bit nicer. So y minus minus 11 is going to equal m. Sorry, not m. I've got, I know what m is now. So 4 over 5 x. Actually, I've just realized I've massively overcomplicated this because we already have the intercept. So it would, it would have been better to use y equals mx plus c in this instance because we have the intercept straight away. I didn't actually realize that. y equals 4 fifths x minus 11. So we've worked out the equation of the tangent here, and we're trying to find point D. So the next thing to do, or at least one way you can do, do this, is to find D, is to solve the equation of the tangent simultaneously with the equation of the circle. It's a little bit tricky just because we've got a fraction in here, but it will work. So I'm going to go through how you can do it. And then I'm going to give an alternative method. Because actually I took one look at that and I thought, oh, this doesn't look very nice. Surely there's a there's a better way. And it's less intuitive, but it's less technical algebraically. So I'm going to replace all my y's by this 4 fifths x minus 11. Now I'm squaring it here, so I'm just going to write it as a double bracket to make that a little bit clearer. Then I expand this bracket out, so 16 over 25x squared. And I've got these cross terms. I've got 4 fifths times minus 11. And I'm going to get it twice. So minus 88 over 5x plus 121 plus 36 over 5x minus 99 plus 19 equals zero. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do the next bit. Probably, especially if you're preparing, you know, doing this in an exam situation, you would just use your calculator as much as possible. So I'm going to add the two coefficients for x squared, which gives 41 over 25. And do the same for the other ones. Minus 82 over 5. Sorry, I actually I forgot to put the x squared in. And then 121. Minus 99 plus 19. 41. Okay, and then we could actually, you know, rather than simplifying it any further, we'd be okay just using the quadratic formula. Sorry, the calculator app is not working as well as it should at the moment. Normally pretty good. Okay, and we get 5 and 5. Actually, we get this double root. 
and that's all we need now i don't know i'm gonna i'm gonna do it without a calculator as well you can forward pass this bit if you're not interested but it's worth being able to see this sort of thing i think so instead instead of go using my calculator to get to here um yeah i'm just going to do it from the start so i could write it as x squared plus six uh 16 over 25 x squared then i've got minus i can add these two together minus 52 over 5x and then i'm going to combine oh, sorry minus 6x i forgot about that one i'm going to combine the numbers which would give the plus 41. now rather than combining it any further i'm going to times through by 25. So 25x squared plus 16x squared minus now here. When I times by 25, I can just times the top by 5 and get rid of that 5. So that's going to give 260. This is 150. And this is 41 times 25, which I'm going to leave like that just for the moment. Because I'm going to get 41x squared minus 410x plus 41 times 25 equals zero and the great thing here is that we have a common factor of 41 that's why i actually helped to not even times this out because you can see it directly so x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals zero x minus 5 all squared equals zero and x is equal to 5. okay so that's just an alternative route without using a calculator um which you know that there, there might be questions where you would be forced to like simplify things like this so it's not a waste of time to learn how to do it at all and actually for the purpose of this question we are sorted because i've worked out the x coordinate that's all i was interested in so the area of the triangle is going to be a half times 11 times 5. which is 55 over 2, or 27.5 units squared. Okay, we're done. You might have been tempted to work out why, in which case you, you can. It doesn't actually help, but substitute it back into here, and it's going to be 4 fifths times 5, which is just 4. 4 minus 11 minus 7. Okay, I'm going to show you an alternative method for this. So this is how I did it. I found the gradient of the tangent. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to look at the gradient of the normal. And that is the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. So it's going to be minus 5 over 4. We can also work out the gradient by using the center, which um, I've forgotten the coordinates of the center, 3 and minus 9 over 2. And then I don't know these coordinates, but maybe I call them A and B. So actually, it's going to be B minus minus 9 over 2 over a minus 3 and I can write an equation down then so minus 5 over 4 times a minus 3 is going to equal b plus 9 over 2 
Okay, I've just times to cross. Now I'm going to times through by 4, so minus 5, a minus 3, equals 4b plus 18. Minus 5a plus 15 equals 4b plus 18. So therefore, 5a plus 4b equals minus 3. And I've got a similar, you know, I've got an equation. It's going to be simultaneous equations ultimately. But this is like, you know, simplified. And also, we know that the tangent goes through the point D. So I can actually substitute it in. Substitute it in to y equals 4 over 5x minus 11. So b is going to be 4 fifths a minus 11. I've created a second equation. 5b is equal to 4a minus 55. And therefore, 4a minus 55 is going to, sorry, 4a minus 5b is going to equal 55. I'm going to times this one through by 5. So 25a plus 20b equals minus 15. Times this one through by 4. 16a minus 20b is equal to 220. Because now I can add them together, which gives 41a equals 205. And a is equal to 5. That's my value of x, remember. x, so d, is going to be 5 and something else. And I'm going to actually, I'd get the minus 7 if I substitute it back in. So just an alternative route, a um, bit, less, bit less intuitive, I think. But it doesn't involve the quadratic equation. So it's, I, I wanted to talk about that. Both methods are good. and ultimately give us the correct answer.